In this video, we're going to continue our conversation about diagnostic testing, and we want to calculate some values such as the sensitivity, specificity, accuracy, and then we want to calculate the probability of a false positive and false negative. So before we do anything, let's just make sure we understand what we're looking at. We have a strep test, and it is a saliva test. We see that some people come in, take the test. <clears throat> Those that do have the bacteria present, some of them test positive, but some of them test negative. And the same thing for those who do not have the infection or the bacteria present. Some of them still test positive and some do correctly test negative. So let's go through and just before we do anything, let's calculate some totals. Just making sure I understand all of the information in the table. So if I just look at those that tested positive and I wanted to find the total number of people that tested positive, I could just add the 128 that did not, or excuse me, that did have the bacteria present and tested positive and those that did not have the bacteria present. And when I sum those, what I should get is 229. So I'm just going to write that over here on this side. Out of those who tested negative, we see there are 97 people plus 144 people. That's 241. So that means when I add those together, we're looking at a total of 470 people, which is what I was told. So that's a good check. Now let's just look at the total number of people who had the bacteria present. There were 128 people here, 97 people here. So when I sum those, I get 225. So there were 225 people who had the virus present, or excuse me, the bacteria present. And then those who did not, I want to sum 101 and 144, I get 245. Now we can consider some calculations involving this test. Is it accurate? Is it a good indicator if somebody's coming in with the bacteria present? Are they going to be able to accurately determine whether or not that person tests positive or not? And so let's first think about the sensitivity. And if you remember the sensitivity, the sensitivity, if somebody has the bacteria present and they come in, we would want them to test positive. And that's what the sensitivity describes. It describes those that have, or excuse me, those that test positive given that they have the bacteria present. And so I'm going to write that very briefly here with some probability notation. So the probability that they test positive given that they have the bacteria. So we'll just put bacteria. Now, we already went through and found the sum of all of those who have the bacteria. So those that had the bacteria present, there were 225 of those individuals. And out of those individuals, there were 128 that had or that tested positive. So if we can leave it at that fraction, sometimes it's okay to just leave it as the fraction. If I wanted to turn this into a percent, we can turn that into a decimal, we get about 56.9%. So the sensitivity of this test is 56.9%, meaning it gets a little bit over half of the individuals correct. If somebody's coming in with the bacteria, it's going to catch, this test is going to catch about half of them. The specificity involves those that come in without the bacteria and having the test correctly identify them as negative. So as a probability, using our notation, these are the individuals that test negative given that there's no bacteria. So I'm just going to write no bacteria. So according to this table, there are 245 people who do not have the bacteria. And when they come in, we want them to test negative and we see that there were 144 of those individuals that tested negative. So as a percent, if I were to round this to the nearest tenth of a percent, we get 58.8%. So pretty close that the test correctly identifies about 58.8% of those who do not have the bacteria. The accuracy of the test refers to the total number 
of individuals that had a true positive and true negative. So if I go up here to the table, I see that there were 128 total people that had the bacteria and tested positive. We refer that to a true positive. And there were 144 people who tested negative and correctly tested negative. So this is the true negatives. And if we add those together, that's going to give us the total number of people who, in this case, had a happy, quote unquote, happy result. The test correctly identified them. And so when I sum that, 128 plus 144, I'll get the total number of people who were correctly identified with the test out of the entire population of interest here, which is 470. So 128 plus 144 as a fraction, we can see that this is 272 out of 470. And if you wanted to calculate this as a percent, we're getting numbers that are really close to one another. This is approximately 57.9%. So again, a little over half. This test is a little over half accurate. Closer to 57%, you 58%, meaning that it correctly identified about 58% of those um, individuals who came in. The last things we want to consider here, we want to consider the false positive and false negative. So for the false positive, this is the probability that someone comes in and tests positive even though they don't have the bacteria. So they're coming in without the bacteria and yet they still test positive. What we know, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, what we know from the table, those, the total number of people who were coming in without the bacteria, there were 245 of these individuals, and out of these individuals, 101 tested positive. So this is a false positive because they don't have the bacteria, yet they are testing positive. If we wanted to convert this as a, this is, it's saying what's the probability, we can calculate this, turn this into a decimal, we get 0 0.4122 and that continues. So approximately, if I wanted to write this as a percent, we have 41.2%. There's a 41.2% rate of a false positive. Now just be careful, again with the notation, probability can be written as a fraction or a decimal, and oftentimes we might want to see it as a percent as well. So just hopefully you're comfortable converting between all three. Finally, the probability of a false negative, the probability that someone comes in and tests negative given that they do have the bacteria present. So they have strep, but yet they come in, take the test, and the test says, nope, you don't. So out of everybody who has the bacteria, that's 225 individuals. And those who were incorrectly identified by the test negative, there are 97. So 97 out of 225, we get 40, about 43.1% or 0 0.431. So all of these again, fraction, decimal, percent.